we got another solve by x. Um, again, though, on this one, we have, um, it's a little difficult because this one here, we have two denominators that have x, okay? So in both of these denominators, we have x. Um, so what we were going to try to do is we really want to get rid of these denominators. And one way we can get rid of the denominators is multiplying the entire equation by one of the denominators. So let's start with, um, let's start with the simpler one, x here. I'm going to use this term by multiplying the entire equation by the term x. I probably shouldn't have wrote an x beside an x. But essentially what that means is we're going to multiply this value by x, this value by x, and this value. There are three different terms here. We're going to multiply all of them by x. Um, when we do that, what it's going to allow us to do is get rid of uh, the denominator in the very first term. So we'll number the terms. It's term 1, term 2, and term 3. That's annoying me. Um, so when we do that, the first term is going to become x or 1x over x. The second term will become 4 and 4 times x. The x just stays in the numerator, the denominator stays the same. But the last thing we get on the right side is 1x, okay? The very first term, x uh, divided by x cancels each other out, so we're left with 1. We just have the value of 1 plus 4x divided by 6 plus x equals, and I can just write this as x also. So since we've done that once, our goal here is to do it a second time. So we're going to take the second denominator, x plus 6, x plus 6, we're going to multiply x plus 6 and x plus 6. We're going to multiply every term in this equation by that. So when we do that, 1 times x plus 6 is just going to leave us with x plus 6. On the second term, instead of actually carrying out the distributive property, I'm just going to write it beside it because it's going to show you how we can very easily cancel it out since there's two values beside each other. And finally, we'll have x times x plus 6, okay? What happens to the second term here, I'll give it a little number, um, the x plus 6 is they both cancel out, okay? And what that now means is I go up to the top right side of my, our page here. We'll kind of put a line in to show that it's a new continuation. We have x plus 6 uh, plus 4x. So we simplified those two terms is equal to x times x plus 6. This is more familiar territory once again. The first set of brackets can drop off. So we have x plus 6 plus 4x, and we can collect like terms. Over here on the right side, we have to use distributive property. So that's going to end up as x squared plus 6x. Remember our goal when we're trying to solve for x so that we can try to use factoring, we're going to try to set it equal to 0. So I already have three terms on the left side, so I'm actually going to move um, my two terms from the right side. I'm going to move them to the left. They're just going to both become negative. So we'll get a negative x squared, negative 6x, and then the rest of what we had, positive x, positive 6, positive 4x, and then the right side is again 0. We have nothing left on that right side. Um, the x squared is by itself, so I can't do anything to minimize it. The negative 6x, positive x, and 4x, they can all become one term. We can collect them into one term, so we'll get negative x squared. This becomes negative 5. This becomes negative x. And then finally, we just have plus 6 is equal to 0. Now this looks like something that we can factor. It's a lot simpler. Um, it is usually easier to factor when our a value is actually positive one. So just like we did in the very first steps, I'm actually gonna multiply the entire equation by negative one. So when I multiply every term by negative one, the zero, nothing happens to it. But what it does to the left side of the equation is it allows us to work with a positive a value, which makes it a little simpler for mental factoring. Now I have a positive a value, so I just need two numbers that multiply to negative six and add to one. If we quickly think about it, x plus three, x minus 2 equals 0. From this spot, we're in familiar territory again. We split the two equations, x plus 3 equals 0, x minus 2 equals 0, and we'll end up with x is equal to negative 3 and x is equal to positive 2. So the goal here is they're presenting questions in a fashion that we're not quite used to seeing. 
So we'll use some other rules that we know, like multiplying the entire equation by a value or cross multiplying, which we've done in the previous one, to get to a situation where we're used to looking at something like this where we can factor to solve for x. So all we're trying to do is kind of get rid of fractions, collect like terms, and then get to something that we can use factoring. And once we can use factoring, it becomes pretty root for us. We're used to doing that. We're looking at just finding x in those specific examples.